let's start on ICBMs. Yay, nukes! So this will be explosive, and we'll have time to test them out, possibly on hat films. Yeah, let's test them out on hat films. Yeah. I wanna go nuke stuff. I like it when I nuke stuff. Okay, so we Nuking need stuff is a so much fun. place to launch them from. Can you think of anywhere good? Your butt. No. <laughs> You're no fun. <laughs> um, maybe we should, maybe we should like make a launch pad from the bit that we built for uh Mickey and um the other sheep, the other questing ram, uh Mickey and Sir Ramsalot. What inside the middle? Yeah. Because you've already got like a kind of circular bit. Although I'd feel kind of bad turning their nice natural if we area. Made it, we made a hole here and then like a silo. That would be pretty cool. Actually. Or maybe how about the platform over here where we built the Batmobile ramp out? Okay. Like I'm, I'm here now. Sure. Yeah, that sounds good. If you, so if you build out a platform here, you get some dirt and just build it out so it's nice and flat. Okay, I'm and, just trying um, to, like, Thormachromakoff stuff. Thormachromakoff. Yeah. <laughs> what? Nothing. That's what the word is, isn't it? It's, uh, th thermometer. Th th a thermometer? Th thermometer. It's a thermometer. Thalmometer. Maybe it's th is it thalm? I'm not sure if it's thalm or thorm. It's a thermometer. I think it might be thalm. Thermometer. Thalmometer. Thermometer. Thalmometer. Thermometer. Thermometer. It's a thermometer. I don't know why you keep telling me off. That's it's not, what it is. It's not. It's a thermometer. It's a thermometer. Oh, Kim. What? <laughs> You're going to drive me mad. <laughs> <laughs> you say that every day. It's so boring now. Like I worried the first time you said that and then you just say it all the time. <laughs> so I just realized that you were overreacting. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Anyway, you were already mad. Says who? Says me. Right, so I'll run some cables over there for you. Okay. But we do need some power. I got the I'll power. I'll run it under the bridge. Like Christmas lights. Hey, it's almost Christmas soon. It's like three months, four months. Yeah. Some months. Should we start singing Christmas songs? Oh, God, no. <laughs> what do you do for Christmas? Um, Kind of just chill. And then I go home for like a week to see my parents. Mm-hmm. That's pretty much it. Yeah. Yeah. I was waiting for you to ask me what I did. That's that's generally polite. It's just gonna be a sad answer though, isn't it? No! <laughs> I'm not a sad person. What did you do for Christmas, Kim? Spend on my own. <laughs> there we go. It's not a sad answer. You don't really celebrate Christmas though. Well, I don't anymore because the problem is is my parents are generally out of the country in Malaysia. Yeah. And by that point, I can't generally afford a ticket home. And also, I kind of hate traveling, um, like, airports at Christmas. Mm. Um, and also, I'm sort of trying to find an airline that will take me home that isn't Malaysian Airlines. Yeah, through them. Um, so, yeah, that's adding problems. Uh, they makes... should just really rebrand themselves at this point. Well, it's not just that, but I was thinking before, like, the kind of... the, the disappearance of um, the MAS flight last year and um, before... Uh, the other plane was sadly um, blown up earlier this year. Like I, I was thinking, like the last time I flew with them, that their planes are getting a bit old and tired. Um, and yeah, I wasn't very comfortable on the flight the last time I flew over with them. Um, so I was sort of tentatively looking for new yeah. uh, a new airline to fly with anyway. But yeah, so um, because of uh, all that, I, I don't really go back to Malaysia uh, to be with my parents. And because they're not here, I generally don't have anyone to celebrate with. Oh, well, we, we do a bunch of office stuff at Christmas, don't we? We've got we all the live streams. Live streams. We, <laughs> the, we had the party last year. That's good fun. Yeah. But like on the, actual the actual Christmas Day, yeah, yeah. On, on actual Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, there's nothing for me to do. Aww. So yeah, which is why last year I decided to go to Japan because I was like, screw this, I'm out. Um, and before before you all go, oh, you could afford to go to Japan, but you couldn't afford to go to Malaysia. The only reason I could afford to go to Japan was because I had enough air miles um, to have a, a free flight. So all I paid was 100 quid in taxes. That um, is awesome. I really should yeah. sign up for air miles. Yeah, they're, they're honestly they fly quite often. <laughs> the best. I mean, I go on enough press trips that it's just like yeah. it, it. It's it's like free money 
and free trips to Japan. Like seriously, so my flight cost a hundred quid, and then because I stayed with um, friends, I've got some friends who live out there um, and work for. So I got some friends uh, who work in Tokyo, and I've got uh, two friends who do like the kind of teaching English as a yeah. foreign language um, out in Kashihara. So I went and stayed with them out in Kashihara. So I essentially didn't pay for accommodation either. Um, so you actually had quite an awesome Christmas, really. Yeah. Well, you say Christmas, like I didn't, I didn't actually celebrate Christmas. Like I didn't have anything to do on Christmas Day. Um, I, just, I sort of wandered around Tokyo on my own because um, I couldn't get to my friends in time. So on actual Christmas Eve, Christmas Day 2013, I was just on my own uh, wandering around Tokyo, which, to be honest, was pretty rad. Yeah. Um, and when I went back to my ryokyen, which is like a kind of traditional, almost like a hostel, um, they had a communal kitchen area and eating area, and I got a slice of cake from the Seven uh, Eleven around the corner, and um, yeah, just had that mm. on my own. And oh, well. even if it does sound sad, that was like actually I was really really happy because I was like I'm in Japan. Sounds like a nice nice day to me. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, so that was that was pretty cool. And unfortunately, I've used all my MLs, so this year I don't know what I'll be doing. Just be sat on my own eating. A microwave dinner. Have except, you had any mooncakes? I don't have any Do you have microwave. any mooncakes at the Mooncake Festival? Yes, I did. Thank you very much. I am very much love Mooncake Festival. What um, do they taste like? They're quite sweet. It, it's a strange thing. I, the problem is, mooncakes, especially in this country, are quite expensive because um, they generally have to be imported. Um, and they are an unusual taste and texture, so a lot of Western people don't really like them. And because they're expensive, I generally be a bit of a tight ass and don't share <sighs> with friends because they don't appreciate it. And I'm not spending 25 quid. Is on that how much they are for a yeah, bloody cake? For Well, for four, a, 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 a crate of four, a crate, a tin of four. Um, so what actually are they? Is it like... Pastry. So it's pastry on the outside, and then you can get different fillings. Although the ones I got this year were um, white lotus uh, paste, oh my God. Um, and then you have a salted. Is that a real thing? Yes, and then you have. She looks uh, like a fantasy plant. Wow. Okay. Um, <laughs> and then you have like a salted duck egg in the middle, and the salted duck egg um, represents the moon. Um, the moon. Yeah. So it's it's pretty awesome, and. Um, there's various other bits and pieces you can do, like, you know, traditionally it's also sort of an un un unofficial matchmaking um, time. Like Valentine's Day. Yeah, sort of. So in kind of more traditional parts of China and stuff like that, they'll do have matchmaking events. Um, things like where guys go and recite poetry and stuff like that. And oh it, it's God. like a, well, it's like a, a competition and the kind of last guy who recites the best poetry kind of meets the last girl and, you know, they go off together and <laughs> smooch or something. Well, not smooch, but um, get to know each other. Um, or there's a thing that you have, like, processions and stuff like that. And in the olden days, ladies would throw their handkerchiefs out of windows and uh, whoever, like, caught the handkerchief would be their one. <laughs> um, and then there's this thing as well about, like, a kind of old wives' tale of if you... Uh, peel an orange like if you're a girl and you peel an orange and then um, like do it all in one piece so you don't break the skin oh, I'm good at and that. then throw the skin into a river or like just some water like a, a, a body of water you will see the face of your future love what in the orange uh, in the in the water um, yeah so it's, it's kind of cute it's a really cute ceremony and I mean the main thing is you're celebrating the moon um, and the jade rabbit and the lady in the moon, uh, Chang Yi, um, who's the, well, she's essentially known as the moon goddess. And the jade rabbit is up there making um, the elixir of life for the immortals. Um, yes. And uh, Chang Yi used to be a mortal, um, but she drank an elixir of life and floated up to the moon to join the jade rabbit. Um, so she's so not an immortal anymore. Uh, she, she's immortal now. She used to be mortal. Oh, I see. She was just a mortal woman, and now she's immortal. And there's various stories as to why she drank the elixir, but it's all to do with her husband. I'm guessing she wanted to be immortal. Uh, no. <laughs> um, there's, no? So there's two stories. So basically, there's this guy um, who, because it, it goes, but it stems out of sort of several Chinese legends. Um, and this one, like her husband, um, was the head of a tribe who went and shot down the eight sons, because apparently there used to be eight sons, and but they were burning the world to a crisp. So um, he went and he shot eight of them down. Um, and 
you know, became kind of respected right. and loved for it because he essentially saved humanity as we know it. Um, and um, he was granted, uh, she was, he was gifted an elixir of life from the immortals as thanks for what he did. Um, and then there's two different stories. One which was like he was a really horrible person and quite horrible to his wife. And so she drank it to stop him becoming like evil, basically, and a bit of a dick. Um, <laughs> and floated up to the moon. Um, and there was another story where... I'm, I'm very generalising, by the way, because it's been a long time since I actually read the finer details of this. Um, and then there's another story where like a kind of guy from their tribe got really, really jealous and wanted to steal the elixir, um, but she wouldn't let him take it. So her husband was out doing husband stuff. Um, and she wouldn't let him take it, so she drank it to stop this kind of bad guy taking mm. it. Um, and she floated up to the moon um, as a result of taking it. And her husband became so sad that he made offerings of cakes um, to try and entice her back, and it sort of just picked up as a tradition, really. Um, but yeah, moon cakes nowadays often have symbols for longevity and harmony on them. Um, so that's kind of what they symbolise. And they also generally um, designed with circular patterns um, to kind of symbolise unity. Right. Um, yeah. Oh, cool. So it's a time to kind of be with family and friends and loved ones and eat. I and, learned something today. And be together, which generally all Chinese festivals are mainly about eating, if yeah. I'm honest. Especially Malaysian ones, Jesus Christ. I think pretty much all festivals in the world yeah. are about eating. Yeah, <laughs> just, just eating stuff. Yeah. Um, which I have no objections to. <laughs> I'm, I wholly support this. I think it's a great pastime. I think eating stuff at festivals is the best, and I've eaten a lot of mooncakes. Um, so, yeah, I have I have definitely celebrated this one. Good. It's also known as the Lantern Festival as well, so there's, like, various lanterns you can light, and, um, like, you get lanterns with riddles on them and stuff like that. So it's, it's just a really fun time. It's essentially... It's also known as, like... It's known as different... So it's Mooncake Festival, or the Moon Festival, or the Lunar Festival, or the Mid-Autumn Festival, or the Lantern Festival. So is it... It's in Malaysia and... And, um, sort of Southeast China. Asia, so it's Chinese. It's a, a predominantly Chinese thing, but Thailand, Vietnam, uh, v- Vietnam. Vietnam. <laughs> I like that. Vietnam. Vietnam. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, so it's sort of Southeast Asian. I think South Korea have a version of it. I'm not sure if Japan do. I'm afraid. Um, I don't know that. Okay. Um, but yeah, certainly I celebrate it. Um, my family celebrate it. Like my mum was texting me like photos of all her mooncakes and stuff like that. Do they? Did she make them? Uh, no, ah. no. Are they quite hard to make. Quite tricky. Yeah. I'm, and I'm not a talented baker. Um, so I mean, that's and also you can't really get the ingredients in this country like the lotus paste, and you can <laughs> get like red bean paste as well. Um, and now you can have like ice cream fillings too and stuff like that. Like in the modern this modern day and age. Do you make like um, a um, what's that? What's that amazing? cake called with ice cream in the middle and like meringue baked on the outside Alaska. that's the one and they have like a baked Alaska moon cake maybe that's I, I don't I know I'm not I I'm love not, baked Alaska I'm not an esca- expert in that kind of thing no 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 but there you go that's the moon cake festival that's, I love it that's cool thanks for telling me that Kim that's alright like, <laughs> you sound so interested no like, I liked um, I like learning about stuff like that I love like mythology and myths mm. and legends especially like just from different cultures just absolutely love it my favourite though would have to be I guess Norse I love Norse legends yeah they're great and Vikings and actually I used to be well into kind of Egyptian legends when I was younger um, Greek's good mm. all good. of that all of it. Love All it. Of it. Love it. Love it. And I'm getting the feeling that that's what you did too. You finally read the comments. I always read the comments. And everyone going, oh my god, Duncan, you don't know how to use any eye. <laughs> oh my god. 